Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. So what's been taking you so long to, to gather up with somebody? I know. Well, I heard you say you've been working on you, working on you. Right, a lot of changes. So do you think that's a, a time to be by yourself? Or when you, when you should gather with other brothers? Absolutely. That's when you should gather with other brothers, right? Give me that in, uh, what's that, Ecclesiastes? Uh, what's that, four? No. Four and nine. Four and nine. Watch this. Let me show you something. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter four and verse nine. You know? Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So two are better than one, right? You got that, right, Go ahead. Okay. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone. So if you fall, the divorce, father passing, and any other thing that came carry your way, right? We all have been through those, through those situations. But guess what, we got each other to lean, lean on. The scripture told us, lean on one another in times like that, right? Read that part again, verse 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. We're going to lift you up. Nobody. It's just you by yourself. That's right. But scripture says his fellow will lift him up. That's why you got to gather together. Yes. You right. can't do that stuff on your own. Right. And I'm going to show you what happens when you're on your own, when you're by yourself. The devil likes that. That's what the devil loves. Watch this. Keep reading. But woe to him that is left alone when he woe means destruction. That's right. So destruction to him. Read. But woe to him that is left alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Who will help you up? You ain't got another one to help you up. Go to uh first Peter, what's that, five, five and seven, starting verse seven. Who will lift you up? Who will help you? Nobody. Now what you have to do is lean on your own. Uh, uh, devices to get yourself out of that feeling. So whether it be weed, whether it be uh, getting into another uh, messed up relationship, right? You ain't gonna do it according to the word. You ain't got a brother in your ear hitting you with scripts like, brother, you're supposed to do this. Brother, you should be doing that. You need to call me when you, you know, when you're going through something. No, now you just you sitting there. You might drink and get drunk. Now, you didn't used to smoke weed, but you talking to dudes in the world, they like smoke this. That'll take it away. You find yourself into all kind of wickedness when you do it on your own. Right? Watch this. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5 and verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So right there it says, cast all your cares upon the Most High, because he cares for you. Now watch this. Verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because you have been selling the devil as a roaring lion, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he shall devour. So he, when you're by yourself, that's when he can pick you off. Remember, it's safety in numbers, Zephaniah 201. It's safety in numbers. So what you do is you go off to the, to the side by yourself and try to deal with your own issues. The devil loves that right there. He said, go, my bad, go back, go back. He says, like a roaring lion, he's seeking whom he can devour. He can only do it when you're by yourself. But if you, within the multitude of the brothers, we ain't gonna let those spirits get the best of you. Right? And that's why God told us to gather together. Read that and then go to Zephaniah. Read. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion, lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He walking around. He looking for all those people that separate themselves. And then check it out. Okay, come on around. Come on around. 
then, then, then check it out. Then, once he gets you by himself, now nah, he got you. You start rolling with, rolling with your own thoughts. Before you get to Zephaniah, give me um, Jeremiah 17 and 9. Watch this. Or Mark 7, 21, either one. Now watch this. When now you by yourself, I'm setting the scene. Now it's been three years since you knew this truth. And you've been kind of reading on your own. Didn't problems keep coming? Did it ever get better? <laughs> okay, well, in time, you know, uh, all wounds get healed. Oh, wa oh, watch this, watch this. Yeah, watch this. Read out! Look at Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. Read out! The heart is deceitful above all things. There you go. So the heart is deceitful above all things. When it says your heart, it's talking about your mind. Right? So now, your mind is deceitful above all things. You tell yourself, you know what, to get over this situation, I'm going to just go ahead and do this. Which would more than likely be sin. It's not going to be a righteous solution to your problem. It's going to be a wicked solution. Now, you may not look at it as that bad of a wicked solution, but it's wicked nonetheless if you uh, address any of those issues without using this Bible. You understand what I mean? Right? Read it again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So he's going to give you what you're looking for. So remember, the heart is desperately wicked, right? Who can know it? So when you're out there and whatever it is you think that's the right thing to do, you're like, all right, go ahead, have at it. But it's not according to the, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Zephaniah 2 and 1. And right. Zephaniah 2. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. You know? Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. We have to gather together. We got to gather together. We can't do this by ourselves. Even going through a divorce, going through death in the family. You can't do that by yourself. It's things that come upon us on this earth. You got to understand, all these other nations are against us. Everything that you see is not in favor of the Israelite man. It's no coincidence that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are on the bottom of society. Across from, from one end of the earth to the other end. Bring it out. Right? It's no coincidence. They did this on purpose. Right? But now that we're coming into who we are and our awakening and our nationality, our heritage, we can get out of it. But we got to be obedient to the word. And being se a separatist ain't going to get it. Right? We got to come together. Watch this. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So we got to come together before Christ came here, right? Before that destruction came, right? Do you know that uh, yesterday marked like 400 years of, uh, since the first lady got here? Right, 16, 19, yeah, I, I saw them looking at that, right, right. And you know, now, the children of Israel were in the wilderness, uh, I mean, in, uh, in, 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 in exile in Egypt, rather, for more than 400 years. So we don't want to... Don't look at that 400 years and say, okay, it starts here. Don't, don't get into that. Because if you uh, go into the scriptures, we were in uh, Egypt for longer than 400 years. But you are right. You are right. That makes 400 years, right? Yeah, we were kicked out of, uh, out of um, uh, Israel for way longer than that. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. But it, it, but it, but it, is, it is a good um, speaking point that yesterday marched the 400th year, right? And it's no coincidence that the Most High is waking us up and putting us out here on the corner, putting you over here in our presence, right? And us in your presence. I've been thinking about this. I need to get to the like-minded people. Here I am driving down the road. And here we are. There you go, your prayers answered. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 1. Thy son, if thou come to serve the Lord, Prepare thy soul for temptation. So, what did the scripture say? It says, my son. You, you familiar with the book of Sirach? Yeah. Okay. It says, my son, when you come to serve the Lord. So three years ago when you find out, oh man, this is true. It says, prepare your soul for temptation. You know what was crazy about that? What's that? My wife was the biggest person who was trying to hold me back. 
See? See? There you go. And it was it's crazy. I was, I'd open up my Bible. I was reading constantly. I'm like, hey, why don't you come study and read the Bible with me? She didn't want nothing to do with it. Uh -huh. Now, you see the hypocrisy in that? Her father is a, is, a, is a Baptist pastor. You open the Bible, and she don't want nothing to do with it. But I'm going to let you know, none of them Christians want anything to do with this Bible. They, they don't want nothing to do with this Bible. We didn't have pastors come over here. They see us reading the Bible. They think we about to do all that shucking and jiving and cooning and jet dancing. As soon as we go thus saith the Lord, they out of here. They try to stay for a hot second, and then they out of here. And it, so it's no surprise that uh, your ex bounced, you know what I mean, that you had to get a divorce. But that's because the Most High was setting you up for something greater than her. He was trying to get you a righteous a Proverbs 31 woman. No, that's right. right. That's what, what he's setting you up for. Not one of these thoughts running around here. You know what I'm saying? One of these, and then let's call it what it is. Because I was a hoe. I was a whore. Or a whoremonger. Right? And to be a whoremonger, you need a whore. And that's all that's running around here. Unless they come back and repent. When they come back and repent and get their mind right with God, then they are a child of God. Right? Until then, they're a child of the devil. That's right. You can't serve two masters, right? So let's read this. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. So when you get hit with that affliction, don't cut and run. That's what that's saying. Don't cut and run. You're supposed to run towards the Bible. And running towards the Bible is coming with your brothers. We study every day. You know, we, we, we do this Bible every day. You know, we got lives, we all work, you know what I mean? Some of us are married, some of us not, right? But you should never forsake this. You shouldn't put this on the back burner. Now, I'm glad the most I brought you here, but he brought you here for a reason. That's right. Right? Read. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So you may be increased in the last end. The most high is going to multiply your blessings. He just got rid of all that, that wickedness. Now he's cleaning you up, right? Getting you dusted off. Now he's trying to clean you up so he can get you, uh, uh, present you before a wife. And then somewhere, somewhere in this world, maybe down at our school, down in Detroit, he's cleaning the sister up for you right now, right? But sorry about that. So he's cleaning the sister up right now, just for you. What's your name? Nicholas. There you go. So he's cleaning Nicholas up. Then he's cleaning some sister up, right? So he can bring y'all together, right? Go to um. Matthew 19. Go to Matthew 19. What is it, verse 16? All right, watch this. We're going to go to verse 19, chapter 19 of Matthew, verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Okay, so what good thing must we do to have eternal life? So not only do you want your blessings you know, right now while you're here, but we also want the kingdom, right? So what good things must we do? Read. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So if you're going to enter into life, keep the commandments. So now you know about fringes, right? got to get you some fringes. Right. I just pulled that to show you it's still small things you got to do. Even though, you know, I'm sorry to hear that your father passed, right? I'm sorry to hear that your wife didn't want to hearken, you know, to this. Y'all had to separate. But you still got to keep the commandments. Right. right? You can't even have a pity party and say, woe is me. You got to say, you know what? Let me dust myself off. Let me start keeping these commandments. So if all those fail, I can get that king. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.